let sigma be some finite alphabet. Next up on our to-do list for regular sets, in this video we're dealing exclusively with DFA regularity, is to show that they're closed under finite unions and intersections. Specifically, we'll prove that if x and y are regular sets, then the sets x union y and x intersect y are also regular. Our tool for showing this will be the product construction. Suppose that x and y are regular sets over sigma. What this tells us by definition of a regular set is that there exists some deterministic finite automata m and n that accept the sets x and y respectively. Each has some set of states, which we'll call s and t, and some start state, which we'll call s0 and t0 respectively. For a running example, let's take sigma to consist of a and b, and the regular sets x of strings containing an even number of a's, and y, the set of strings containing an odd number of b's. Again, being regular sets, there exist DFAs accepting these sets. A DFA m accepting x could have just two states, corresponding to an even number of a's and an odd number of a's, and transitions that switch states on a's and stay put on b's. We'll accept on an even number of a's. Similarly, a DFA n accepting y could also have just two states, corresponding to an even number of b's and an odd number of b's, and transitions that switch states on b's and stay put on a's. Here we'll accept an odd number of b's. Be sure to convince yourself that these two DFAs accept x and y respectively. But remember, these could have been any two DFAs, accepting whatever two regular sets x and y we were given, and over any alphabet sigma. Just to get a feel for what we're talking about, suppose we want to show that x union y is regular. By definition, we somehow need to construct a DFA that accepts the set x union y. In other words, it accepts a string x just when x is in x union y. By definition of union, it accepts a string x just when it's in either x or in y. Now, x in x means the DFA m needs to accept x, and x in y means that the DFA n needs to accept x. This suggests a plan. Given a string x, our new DFA will need to run both machines on x, and accept x just when either one accepts x. The idea here is pretty simple. For example, let's run the string x equals ab ab through both machines. It's accepted by m and rejected by n, so we want to accept that string. On the other hand, for x equals a, b, b, both machines reject it, so we want to reject that string. The only snag is that we need a single DFA that somehow runs both m and n simultaneously on the same input string. What we see in front of us shows us exactly how to do that if we go back to our definition of what a DFA consists of. What we need are a finite number of states with one start state, transitions from each state for each symbol of our alphabet sigma, and some subset of the states marked as accept states. To help us refer to these DFAs, let's label their states. M will have states 0 and 1, and N will have states A and B. Now let's look at how this combination of DFAs starts. If we were to describe it in words, we might say something like, M is in state 0, and N is in state A. The symbol A will transition both machines to new states. After the transition, we might describe what we see as M is in state 1 and N is in state A. This AND, keeping track of two states at the same time, could be recorded simply as an ordered pair. Our start state was the ordered pair 0A, and the symbol A sent us to the ordered pair 1A. This cues us into what the set of states should be for our new machine, the set of all ordered pairs ST of a state of M and a state of N. In other words, the Cartesian product of the two sets of states. Because each DFA has a finite number of states, our new set of states will still be finite. Once we've realized that the states for our new DFA should be ordered pairs of states from M and N, the rest of the DFA falls right into our lap. We'll line up the states of our two factor DFAs to give us columns and rows, and the states of our new machine will form a grid of ordered pairs. Each of these four states can be identified by the pair consisting of the label above it and the label to its left, 0a, 1a, 0b, and 1b. The start state for our new machine is simply the ordered pair s0, t0 of the start state of m and that of n. In this case, the start state is 0a. The transitions for our new machine, given some pair st of states and some symbol from sigma, 
transition to the pair following the M transition from S and the N transition from T. Let's work through the transitions for each of our new states. First, for our start state 0A. From the state 0A, on an A, M transitions from state 0 to state 1, and N comes back to state A. The net effect is, in our product, the symbol A transitions us from the state 0A to the state 1A. Starting at 0A with a B, M's transition leads us back to state 0, and N's transition takes us to state B. The net effect is, on a B, we transition from 0A to 0B. Let's do one more. From state 0B, on an A, M transitions to the state 1, and N transitions back to the state B. The net effect is, on an A, our product transitions us from 0B to 1B. On a B, M transitions from state 0 back to state 0, and N transitions from state B to state A. The net effect is, on a B, we transition from state 0B to state 0A. Filling in the rest of our transitions similarly gives us the shape of our new DFA. Finally, which states should be marked as accept states? Each pair of states ST has one state from M and one state from N, either or both of which could be accept states in the corresponding DFA. Our choice on how to logically combine these lets us choose the language accepted by our product DFA. For a DFA accepting the union of X and Y, we define the pair to be an accept state if either S or T is an accept state, or of course both. For a DFA accepting the intersection of X and Y, we define the pair to be an accept state just when both S and T are accept states. We can even arrange the set difference X minus Y, or the symmetric difference of X and Y, if we assign the new accept states appropriately. This whole process, due to the Cartesian product of the sets of states it employed, is called the product construction. Note that the word product here refers to the Cartesian product and has nothing to do with string concatenation. This construction allows us to combine two DFAs in such a way that they effectively run simultaneously on any given string, combining the results of the two machines logically in any way that we choose. This process can be performed for any two given DFAs, so it's the tool that allows us to conclude that the union or intersection of two regular sets is regular. In short, given any two regular sets, by definition we have DFAs accepting each set. The product construction allows us to construct a new DFA accepting either the union or intersection of the two given regular sets, depending on how we assign the accept states, which proves that the union or intersection of two regular sets is a regular set. The net effect is that we can add two check marks to our to-do list for regular sets. Next up are non-deterministic finite automata, or NFAs, which will give us the tools to quickly show that regular sets are closed under products and asterisks, as well as giving us our first taste of non-determinism.